In this video, we're going to take a look at loops, blocks, and iterators. And this is just a basic overview. We cover these more in depth in other videos. And you'll actually see their usage more in other videos. And this is just to introduce you to terminology and basically what these constructs do. So the first couple things are loop constructs. And what we mean by loops are a set of statements that are repeated a certain number of times and we should have some kind of value that gets initially evaluated or at some point evaluated as to whether the loops going to continue or not and if it doesn't continue it just exits and continues on to the next instruction after the loop whereas if it if that statement is evaluated as keeping it inside the loop it'll just sit and execute the statements wrapped inside of that loop and, and tell that conditional changes so the first one here is a while loop and our keywords part of our while loop are while and then we have an end down here and what we have here is a boolean test so this is going to keep looping as long as this is true so the number is less than 10 this is going to keep on looping and it's going to keep on doing these two statements. So this first statement just as a put string, it's going to put out whatever number is. And the second one just adds one to number. And you should know that all these loop constructs I have here do the same thing. They count 1 to 10. And I'll go ahead and show you here. So you can see here they count, or I'm sorry, 0 to 9. They count out. So that's essentially what, what's going on there. So this first one, like I said, is a while loop and as long as this is true this is going to keep on looping and I just put these puts in here to put some space in here to make it cleaner now there's next statement here is until and again until it says this is going to keep looping until this guy is true so as long as this is false this keeps looping so it's kind of the opposite of the while loop again our keywords are until and end same statements inside here and it has the same effect of counting up and here's another little puts. Now here's our for loop. We have for i in 0 dot 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 10. This is just a range. And this is similar to the for construct in every many other languages. And again, it just counts up to 10. No big, big deal there. I just realized I need to put this in here to get this to do the right kind of behavior. Now, this takes a few less statements, but you actually have to put your stuff up into here. And you got to know ahead of time, or it has to be set ahead of time, what these are going to be. And it isn't necessarily inherent. You got to do a little bit of extra work to pull out what the stopping value is going to be. Now, a neat one, if you know that you're going to do something a number of times, and this is a construct that really isn't any other language. All these constructs are in other languages. While, until, and the for loop. They just, the syntax might be slightly different, but by and large they exist in other languages. In Ruby, however, we have this unique statement here. And this encapsulates a couple of types of behaviors, or syntaxes, if you will. The first one to concentrate on is this part right here again this is an integer if we remember but in earlier videos we talked about how everything in Ruby is an object so even though it's an integer it's an object still and you can call a method on that object and the times method call isn't got anything to do with time it's like the number of times to do something so what I'm saying by this is do something ten times and what that something is is this little animal here. This is what's called a block. Uh, a block is a way of passing some code to be executed a number of times. And now we'll, we'll look at other blocks in other videos that are more complex, that have a lot more functionality, but they take a touch to wrap your head around. And what we're doing is we're calling this guy 10 times and inside there every time we're executing this statement. What this little guy does right here is that is what gets set to whatever that current loop value is. So we start out at 0 because it's 10 times and essentially we're saying count from 0 to 10. So this little i is going to go from 0 to 9 because everything in computers start at 0. So let me run this again and you'll see here. Here's our first one, 0 through 9. Here's our second one, 0 through 10. Now let's take a look at why that was. Well, you can see right here, it was an until our number is greater than 10. Well, 
10 is not greater than 10. So I'd have to change that and say greater than 9. Let's run it again. Let me close this window. And now we have the right behavior there. So you see, you got to be careful with some of the subtleties of there. And we have those three loops accomplish the same thing. Now, this is the most powerful one by far because you can inject any kind of these blocks in here and it keeps these this language so clean by doing simple things like this and there's other constructs that we'll cover called iterators and this is an iterator where we're doing something a number of times and in arrays if you want to go over an array in other words visit every element in an array that's an iterator and when we cover arrays in a later video we'll actually look at how to iterate through an array but this is just a simple iterator right here where we're just doing something 10 times